Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can paint this Christmas stallion step by step. Now, these particular lessons are very special because we have a lot of extra free learning resources for beginners. On the website and in the link in the chat and in the description, um, oh. I did that. <laughs> We're live, if you're wondering. And so all the things that happen live are happening. So this book, you download, and it gives you tons and tons of extra information. We also have a video on how to grid the stallion in if you're not a person who draws. And we have a traceable on how to just trace for, tra transfer and trace him on if you don't want to grid. So we have everything that you could possibly want as a beginner and resources, extra color mixing information, extra tips on gifts and shipping. I don't know how many pages I did on this, but this is big. I got a little crazy with this one. Mm -hmm. So um, he's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to really slow down and explain every step, every part of the process, everything you need to know. Help me do that is my husband, John. Hello. Let's just jump right on in. So this gorgeous, gorgeous painting starts with a 16 by 20 canvas. You're going to want to start with it painted black and your image sketched on. And again, we have a whole video just in real time for that. If that would be something that's helpful or perhaps the written out description is all you're going to need. You just pick what's right for you. All right. So let's put this up aside and let's put our ready to be painted sketched up there and let's talk about the materials. This is going to be step one for you to get started and that's where you're going to be in the book when you're painting a line you get past the technique information goldilocks information color information paint exchanges grid information yeah i don't i don't i don't know what was going on with me hmm. you'll be starting here step one completed so however you get there if you go this whole way or if you just freehand it or you trace it on that is where step one is. If John can put up step one. Let's see here if I can. If he can't, it's okay. Oh, there's that one. And where did it go? It just, you know what? Like everything else, it just broke. We'll put the bumper up step one. No, I mean, not even kidding you. The bumper just broke. So step one, I'll <laughs> chapter mark that in. I've never worked so hard on a video oh that has gosh. had everything go wrong. Everything. And I never worked this hard on a video. This is like the most I've ever worked, and I did it with my eyes injured. Oh my That's gosh! That's how important it was see, to me. I'm gonna see if I can That's fix that. That's what a big deal it was. It's so like, I'm not gonna give up on this, no, no matter what. I don't. It's like I I'm can't not. tell you. All right, I let's look at the materials okay. while Don works this out. Let's look at the materials. So we have zinc white, and this is a really wonderful and important thing uh, about this lesson. But there's a lot of information about it if you don't know what it is right? Or you don't know if you have it. Everything here is about zinc white exchanges, everything you need to know. You might not know this, but this paint comes in the $2 to $11 range. So it's not necessarily pricey. You just probably need to know more about it. Mm. Titanium white, burnt sienna, Mars black, phthalo blue, phthalo green, cad red, quinacridone magenta, and cad yellow. So those are the colors. 16 by 20 surface, black, ready to paint on. Let's put out our paint, and that's going to give John a little extra time to work out what he's doing there. And we're going to be doing the first part of this. So the first part of the stallion, we'll be doing warm and cool grays um, to demonstrate the reflections from various different light sources and also the color of his fur. Because black horses aren't, you know, just black. They're more than that. So we want to make sure that our stallion has more than that going on. So I'm putting out uh, Mars Black, Thalo Blue, Burnt Sienna. I'm also, I'm going to put out Zinc White. Uh, and you may not know this, but this could be Mixing White, sometimes called that, Tinting White. It's also called that. We're also going to put out Titanium White. If you're a new painter and you're not familiar with these colors, you may not be able to tell them apart just with your eye, right? So here's the trick. If you can't, if you touch the zinc, you can see it's very transparent. If you touch the titanium, it is not. Okay. So if you're feeling a little bit lost, these are both safe uh, to touch and to utilize. I'm going to dip down, John. You know, okay. You know what's interesting? Down. I think I'm going to try this real quick. I'm, I'm I lost right. my little rag here. Oh, did you? 
So okay. check this out. I'm going to see if this works. Okay. <sighs> step one. Oh, look. Well, and, and that was step one earlier, so now this is step two. Now it's out of step one. That's the end of step one. That's the end of step one. But we'll get there. Okay. So let me go. You got a my... step two bumper? I do. I have to make it go to step two. So that's going to be the my. We'll work this out here in a second. Give me a second here. This is the best, craziest video I ever made. You stay here with me. You stay with me, and I've got you. I promise I will never give up on you as a beginner painter. I do have the resources for you. We do have the steps. And sometimes getting all that stuff together, there making it sure it's here at the lesson, when you're ready to paint it. Sometimes that gets a little crazy. Uh, well, actually, usually not. It was just the eye thing this week. I really, really there it goes. Okay. okay. Step two. So moving step on two. now is step two. From the beginning to this was step one. From here on is step two with these colors. Bird sienna, phthalo blue, Mars black, zinc white, titanium white. We're going to put a little uh, water out. And we're going to get, I'm going to get just a, a, a big bristle brush. This is a number 10 Cambridge. It's hog bristle and synthetic filament. You could use any, you know, similar size bright that you have. It's totally fine. You could just round. You could use a cat's tongue. It's all good. You just want the brush that you feel comfortable scumbling and blending and dry brushing with. The one that you really feel comfortable moving around. And you have that brush in your bucket. And if you're new, you don't know you have it, but you do. And you will end up with a favorite brush for this. So let's discover what that brush is together. All right. We're going to be working the neck, right? Step two. And I chose this process on step two. I like these because, like, it keeps me super organized. If you've been with me for a while, you know I can get on a tangent. Yeah. But the nice thing about the step-by-step -step books, the process of writing them and creating the color mixes and explaining everything, is then I have to anchor into my plan. Mm. So the reason we pick the neck is there's a lot of simple rounded shapes here, and it's a great opportunity for you to work out some of your techniques, some of your color mixes as you're trying to get him before we get into the face, before we get into things where you can get a little emotional about it. And believe you me, we can get emotional as artists. We all do it. I'm going to get my brush slightly damp. I will use my reference up here or over here, whichever one I, I will probably use that one. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start putting in our cool grays. And our cool gray is a mix of phthalo blue and Mars black and a little of our zinc. And we're going to come here and start to paint in some of the value and color around his neck. There's really subtle colors in there. These are super subtle colors. And that's the other reason that the PDF is a great resource for you guys to utilize because you can get in there. And again, this is the zinc and really, really play with it. And I'm going to use this one here because the lighting in here is just a little bit crazy for me. Mm. To see this guy, because he's so up close to the light, he's super reflective now. Yeah. My reference is reflective. I might want to put him on an easel to the side of me in future. Hmm. So, I don't know. I'm just like making suggestions. Could be. Oh, I got a little titanium white in there. And you can see immediately that that's a lot more opaque, but that's okay. I can absolutely shade this. If I want it to blend more into the background, I just come back with a little bit of black paint. You see how we do? I do. When you're painting on a black surface and you're trying to create shape and value, using a black canvas is a great way to work that out because it's easy to blend something back. Whereas on a white canvas, it is not always as easy. Now, also, I'm going to come across here, and we're going to use this brush to start to do our mane, just the high reflection of our mane, All right? Maybe a little bit here. These are just the beginnings. I can come back with a little bit of black, and I'm blending that in. You can see I'm just coming along my edge and pulling that forward and blending that into the hair.
Nice. No. There we go. Now we're going to come along the jugular with our cool gray. This is our cool gray. And as his throat, I want a little more blue and black into it. It's a reflection, but he's still quite a dark animal. Mm -hmm. We're going to bring this around here and help shade out this part of the horse's neck along his throat. This is his windpipe. There we go. All right. I also want to bring a little bit of this blue and gray around here. I'll get into my little zinc. And I can always work back into the black. And you can see I'm just scumbling back and forth, scruffling my little brush along. Creating these values. I'm going to also really kind of work his little neck here. And you can see this is a great opportunity to get a sense of your brush and your paint and how it's working for you because you have to realize sometimes you have different things than I have. And so your result could be a little different than mine just because your paint is maybe a little differently uh opaque or your like burnt sienna is kind of different between different paint company lines so there's always some challenges there now our warm gray is our brown our burnt sienna and our black and we're going to come along here and start to kind of pull that in coming forward i'm going to bring this around and at first just pull this down it's a subtle change and again, a lot of these horses will have a couple values I can get right into my zinc when I need to. I'm going to bring this brush stroke and curl it around. See how we're doing? Shaping his neck. Because it is quite, quite round. Shading this back. Ah, so if you're joining us just now, like you got your notification, you're like, how long has this been on? We started this over on Facebook doing the gridding. So if you missed the gridding portion, that's over on Facebook. We did that in a little bit of a pre-show. Also, all the instructions for it are in the mini book. The mini book. So if you just need like written out instructions, we do written out instructions on how... The background is done. I mean, like this whole, I think there's a lot of information on gritting. Mm -hmm. um, and then also remember, guys, the traceable's there. So you don't have oh. to. Please don't unsubscribe just because we're gritting today. So here's a, this is an I'm experience. I'm going to bring a little bit of just my burnt sienna into this. This is a really good thing here. So okay. Lindsay was saying she had paint drip on the edges of her canvas, you know, after painting it in. Do you have any suggestion to prevent that? Uh, watch the, so you're out of your Goldilocks zone. Um, and what I mean by that is on your brush, there is too much water, too little water, and just the right amount. Mm. And so when you're painting, if you're getting drips when you don't want to, you've gotten out of your Goldilocks zone, you have too much water. Uh, what I do to always check it is after I rinse out, I wipe down my brush with a towel to catch any unexpected water, hidden little droppies that have decided to land on me mm. and cause me difficulty in my day because they will do that day. yeah they'll mess with me i'm gonna get a little black and gray again and on it there let's get a little more aggressive with our zinc i'm gonna add a bit of a brighter highlight right here and again you see i'm really moving i'm feather blending i'm kind of working this around here maybe a little of the blue and zinc and at the top of the mane and we'll come in really think about this this is all we're doing we're just painting the reflection on the hair now we need to create our little highlight down here 
and I'm going to start in my brown and my black, as you do, because this part of his body is in, is in a brighter light, and some of the fur in there is cast with like a, a little brown undertone, and I can get into this part of the white, build that up. And so this highlight helps us actually see other parts of the neck. Hmm. It's a very important and useful part. Now we can get into our titanium even. Defining that highlight. I'm going to rinse out, and I'll show you what I meant, Lindsay. So I've rinsed out, and before I reload, I'm going to come here and make sure I don't have excess water on my brush. Mm. I want to make excess water on my brush. Don't want it. It's not going to be my friend. Yeah. I'm going to come along here, you know, and maybe a little bit of a, a stronger highlight is coming along here. On that inside edge where the light's kind of backlighting mm. it. Beth said she just downloaded the gridding booklet. It was super, super worth it. I I am so glad to hear that because so many people worked on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are and these are Cinnamon works super hard to get these resources together for you guys. She really really takes a lot of pride in making sure that she gives you the best resources possible. We've got kind of this going there. We just want to work that out. Get a little bit of that going there. Play with that. Okay. Oh, there's a pop of light there. We're just talking about these pops of light. Mm. And guess what? What's that? I think. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> close to being done with this stuff. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I'll refine maybe in the next one. Because this is a several layers of refinement. So in this step, right, and let's recap, we used a warm gray uh, and a cool gray. In other words, a gray that's Mars black, brown, and zinc white. And then we used a cool gray, which is thalo blue, Mars black, and zinc white. And where we wanted a, a lot of opacity, a lot of value change, we added titanium white into it. We rounded the shapes around his neck. And we alternated between these cool grays and these browns to create that sense, that kind of colorful glow that back black animals actually tend to get, don't they? They get a really colorful glow. So, woohoo! That's step two. Guess what? Step three. Step, step three. three. Let's see if I'm I can I'm ready do that. to be step three. Uh, step three. Step three. Is that a step three? It is a step three. Step, step three. We can do step three. Yeah, it's technology is not being you know, cooperative today. And you know what? I heard we're getting out like a blizzard tomorrow or something. And I'm like, does that mean watercolor Wednesday can't happen? Like what happens I, to, we have we some should... weird stuff today with electricity and everything as it was. And I'm just like, what happens to our broadcast? If it like, if there is feats of snow. You know, it was funny. The, the electric company sent me an email and a text notifying me that my power went out because there's a power outage, which I was kind of like, that's cool that they know. <laughs> and I guess Doesn't they're saying. really help me, but I, you know. I, it's kind of them saying, we know you don't have any power. We'll be on it. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to be mostly using the same colors in step three, right? Which And, and those are written out here. Mm -hmm. We're going to be defining the face, the belly, and the rest of his body. Now that we've kind of worked this out in the neck, let's take these skills around and see if we can get the face in and the rest of the horse. Let's do it. Some tips before we start right. is where he's in he's in deep shadow and we're blending him back into the black ground. We're just going to add more black where we need to do that, like at his legs. So he's just barely caught in the light. He's mm. barely in the light. We're going to be following this right here and we should end up about there when we're done. Nice. All right. Yay. Oh, and you don't have to print the book to download it. You can nope. use it just digitally. You have I'm a plan. Get back into my 
black and blue to create my cool gray and a little bit of a little zinc here. I want it to be fairly dark and I'm going to come to this back end here. Mm -hmm. And let's say you got a bum bum. I will get rid of these little chalk lines later. Right now they help me keep zones separate, especially where deep values are close to other deep values. Sometimes that can be a little bit challenging. And I may switch down into certain places into a smaller brush where necessary. Now, if you're looking for a copy of the booklet, you can probably find a link in the description down below to our website. And, uh, and our moderators will happily drop one in there for you yeah. to the file itself, to the page and the file, anything you need. They know where everything is. They do, they know. You can see we're just lightly wiggling. Isn't that nice? Wiggling painting is always delightful. Little, little, little bit of belly. Now we're upgrading almost all the things in our booklet game, aren't we? We are. Like, this isn't the final edition of the booklet. This is just, this <laughs> is just what we got formatted and sort of spell checked. And then it will get laid out in a beautiful book fashion that's gorgeous to print out that'll look beautiful on your counter. But this one is here today, so if you're following along, you just needed it right now. I didn't want to make you wait a day for the final version. So if you've downloaded it now to do the painting, come back and see the pretty version, because we do a really pretty version. Mm -hmm. Not every lesson we do here is on big canvas at the easel or in booklets. We do some table lessons that are little three who uh, classes, very chill kind of table thing. So uh, if you are looking for the table, that's going to be on Thursday with the bluebirds. Mm. I'm taking a nice kind of little blue glow here at the leg. And we're going to start blending a little bit. Of that. You can see it's a dark value, right? It's a lot of blue in that mix. It's a lot of blue in that mix. I'm telling you what, man, I have been blown away by the paintings I'm seeing in the Facebook group. Oh, I know. Just so good. So we're going to take a little bit of this black here. And we sort of just have that there. And so you can see it's a very subtle, subtle, subtle thing. You know, Jane just said she was really happy to, to, that she came by. She needed a little dose of the Art Sherpa to make her feel better. And you know what? I needed a little dose of Jane to come by and make my day feel better. So thank you, Jane. <laughs> I love, I'm just, I love both of that. That was awesome between you and Jade. I, more of that. That's what we need more of. Let's put our energy into that. For sure. So we're going to continue. Now up here in the forehead, things are lighter. Um, right. His ear is a little bit darker, so we can do a lot of the ear without getting too, like, serious about it. Can I ask I'm a horse come question? Along here. Just get a little edge, huh? Can I ask a horse question? Sure. They actually call it a forehead on a horse? <laughs> no. But he's, they... we're going to call it a forehead today. Okay, I was like, I thought that I heard they had like a... Oh, like they have a... a name for every single part of them. There's no part of a horse that isn't named. And, and it's a very serious biz. Okay, I thought so. Like, I'm, I'm not every... a horse person. Look, horses and humanity, our lives are entwined. So well... we've taken... These creatures very, very seriously. Um, there's, there's a group of people who have taken them very seriously. And then but maybe throughout group, history. But there's a whole other group of people who looked at those things and said, you're doing what? And no, no, I'm not having any part of that. I am grabbing, I don't know what that means, but I'm grabbing some black. I'm not getting on that. No, nobody animal. in history until after cars ever said that. I love you, babe. No. I don't know, man. That's just you. <laughs> and it's a modern thing. I'm just taking my cat's tongue. This is a number eight cat's tongue just to give me a little control here on the air where I want some structure. And you know where you've got to change out brushes. I'm just loading up more zinc white on there. You know, change out brushes. I'll get a little water tipped on that so that the paint flows better, right? We got to get in that Goldilocks zone for the technique we're doing because doesn't the Goldilocks zone constantly change on us? Uh-huh. Depending on the techniques we're working on, depending on the things that we're trying to work out, a little more into the blue, back into the zinc, coming along the back of the ear. I'll tell you what, there's some horse people in here. 
Well, yeah, because they all know, right? Yeah. They're ready to do it. And they're really going to like this because we've gotten deep into it so they can. Cleaning that up. Take things in. Every once in a while, and I'm going to do this, you back away and you give it a look. You have to give it a look. -see. You just leave the, the yeah, chat. Yeah, you do. You just leave. And you go give it a look-see. You go check it out. Oh, you know what's funny? Hmm. Is that, um, okay, so someone was just saying in chat that they're, that horses aren't just for riding in some places and you know i don't know what you mean by that but well you know everybody gets hungry oh boy and i'm i'm gonna say i gotta say the internet is weird i you you need to watch a thing don't don't f word with cats oh yeah it's a very good explanation of the psychology of the internet and what i would say is like <laughs> animals have a have a bunch of very devoted Okay. Now, Heather is in the same crazy boat as you, mm -hmm. because not only does she like horses, she likes the Arabian variety. That's the best kind. They seem to be the most particularly crazy. No. No, we are not. That is no, no, not how horses, that works. Not you. The, well, yes. But, I mean, the horses for sure. No, they're not crazy. They're just smarter than the other horses. I don't know. What I... That just means when the other horses don't understand what's going on, the Arabians always understand what's going on. When the other horses are like, what is this wet on me? The Arabians are like, the sky is crying. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when you understand them, it's okay. We're continuing to do a little bit of a gray here. See how we're getting that around? We want a bit of a stronger highlight along here. Mm. See, I like the Frisians too, Beth. They look pretty. Well, Frisians are pretty. But an Arab you can have a conversation with and they'll listen. Arab seems like a cross between a cat and a horse. Like Maybe, yeah, that might be actually accurate. <laughs> My dad used to say that they were an up 800-pound miniature poodle. <laughs> well, <laughs> Don't, okay. I didn't really agree with that. I would say cat is more accurate. But if, if you're a horse person and you love Arabians, right, you get it. You get it. Because you and your horse, you're like, you share a psychic bond. Mm. He's psychic. I think the psychic bond is that the horse is not going to do what you want it to until it wants to. No, Arabians will do, if he, they don't like you, you just didn't have an Arabian who liked you. An Arabian who likes you will jump off a cliff and believe you when you say there's ground underneath. Mm. That's why an Arabian is a powerful, powerful creature, is because when you do get their trust, when they do believe in you, they will do anything for you. I see. I mean, that's Bucephalus right there, right? Kill yeah. everybody else but Alexander. So <laughs> so you like painting horses, though. I, do, I might like it. I might like it a lot. I'm going to add a little bit of dark value. So when we're going here, some things we want to look at. The front of the jaw tends to have a bit of a highlight. We know we're going to have to run lighter values along the, the front air planes of these, the face here, right? Especially here where it's very flat. We're going to need to create a shadow in this is sort of like if you look at the skull there's an opening an ocular divot behind the eyeball that is going up before the ear so that shadow is always there doesn't matter the breed doesn't matter anything that's going to be there mm. this bone plate that's here that we're going to do a highlight on that's going to be there so there's some things that we do no matter what no matter what Mm. Sweet little mouth, no matter what. No matter. Doesn't matter. And come here and a little bit on the front, a little bit on this, and then definitely strong. Kind of a little highlight there. And a little bit of a slight of value there. Mm -hmm. But we're going to, you know, shade into a deeper value coming down. Looking very nice. Yeah, it's very quickly starts to look, you know, like what it is. That's what we're doing. 
let's get a little more zinc on here and let's make sure we've got a a little highlight to the front of this draw. Let's make sure we've got a little bit here kind of coming underneath to start to define that ocular area. A little plane of highlight. Up over the aisle, start to talk about these things. Starting to talk about it. Wow. Now we got to get a little bit of a start going. Oh, the light got inside your nostril there. So if you think about this, this is a ginormous wind tunnel coming up into your horse's head right that this area takes in wind in a way you cannot imagine and can expand and round out but sometimes if you understand what the parts of the horse are for it can help you understand why you're painting and how you are and we're going to start doing a little bit of a we're going to start getting a little of the a little bit of this here we're almost done with this step. You know, it just takes a few layers to get him painted in. We're going to want to run a highlight from here across. Start to lay that in. You know, because we know that that's there. Sort of highlight from there across. I'm under the jaw bit. Because his, his leg is in shadow, so we're only seeing part of his leg. And then we're going to get a little of the blue in there. Catch a little highlight on the inside. Pick up some of the shape of the leg and the musculature that's there. Little zinc and that. Let's get a start to think about that. You know, sometimes we can get into our titanium weight where we want to have stronger, stronger thoughts. So let's. This is a more considered area, right? A little bit of a highlight fold out there. Just this is now we're in there. It's the same thing, but we're just picking up maybe a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Building up. A little, little, little. A little brown into it, maybe a little zinc and brown, and say, "Oh, there's a little bit of that kiss of brown at the belly, mm. maybe just a little bit." A 
right there. And again, just come into this when you've got a Blend it out. And then when you're done, you're going to want to really give this a look to see if you've laid some of those, the parts of him that require I'm going to just shade that out. Yeah. A little more value on that. So I'm taking my brush down to a damp brush. I haven't really changed brushes. I might change to a no, cat's tongue soon or... You've been using that a much larger brush than I would expect. Well, the bigger you're painting, right, you're going to mm -hmm. want a larger brush. Otherwise, you're going to be working too long. Working too hard too long. You don't want to work so hard wow. so long. Big project now as it is, just... you want to bring that back. Now, stand back. And this is the end of step that step. Three. And we're going on to step four now. We're going to be going on to step four where we take all of this and we refine it and blend it and pull him all together. Oh. Like really, really paint him out the rest of the way so that he looks like who he is. I think that looks pretty good. All right. I'm going to sip my water. So how are you guys doing? Good. This is really nice. <sighs> Folks have been really appreciating like the hoarseness and I don't, I'm not a horse person, so... <laughs> There's lots of horsey bonding, people talking about like the horses they've been on and how everyone's been stepped on by a horse or because like it seems that foots getting stepped on is a common occurrence if you've been a horse person. Why you wear good boots? I don't know these things. My car's never stepped on my foot. That's true. Your car also doesn't love you. I don't know about that. <laughs> it doesn't love you and it doesn't give you nosy kisses when you're sad. Little soft, 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 nosy kisses. With that that may be true. When they come right up and they go, you seem so sad. Let's get some oats. It'll make me, you feel better if you feed me some oats. <laughs> you will feel better. <laughs> <laughs> I am sure. So coming on, have we put up four? Okay. I haven't oh, so let's just go. So we use the same values that we did on step two. And we continued <laughs> to find highlights and values and lay in the basic structure of our horse. That's all we did. Just kept kept going on. We're doing that in layers, and now we're going to hit the last layer where we pull him all together and make him look spectacular. Are you ready for your step four I graphic? I am. I'm super ready for my step four. All right, four. here goes. Do -do -do -do. Step four. Now, I'm going to be using my uh, number eight cat's tongue here, and we're going to start really kind of getting into some of the stronger values, and I might get into my titanium white more often now. Which is obviously a much more pigmented and color. And I like to put a little bit of a highlight right here, kind of coming down. I'm going to just keep working. Those planes, if it gets a little blue, just come back with a little bit of black. Like that. I am so sorry we started a little bit late today, guys. One of the things that's really challenging is for me to see my reference from here. Mm. Now, we, you're you're working with a very dark set of colors that were uh, producing a weird sheen, and the lights are making it harder for you to see that contrast than when usual. It's wet. Yeah, yeah, any of the values or anything, it makes it a lot harder. So I have to really think about it. Now, if you're having that issue at home, you might find that your lighting can affect that it's greatly. too bright and glaring. Yeah, we made some adjustment to our lights here to try to help compensate for the darker picture this time. You don't want to be in too dark a light, too bright a light. Guess what we're going to call it? We're going to say you need to be in the Goldilocks of your light. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to be too brushing it, guys. So I'm going to be using my big scruffy brush and my cat's tongue to kind of build these areas out. You know, as you do. 
It does look like you're coming through this real fast, like you're almost done. It, 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 well, when he comes together, he comes together fast. You know, but we have the wonderful wreath to put yeah, on him. Yeah, still have the wreath to do. So. We still have a wreath to do, and so that's, that's great. And we, we've got that, and they're still fun to be had. Is your eye feeling better now? Oh, my eye is so much better. Oh, good. My eye is so much better. I had to paint some of this with my eye bad. <laughs> it's really hard. <laughs> I was just like, well, this is a special kind of difficult. <laughs> um, but yeah, all better. It, I, we actually haven't, I haven't had a flare up in a super long time. So it's sort of interesting that it came up when it did because it really hasn't come up and bothered me in a while. Um, and it's brought up a lot of interesting conversations because a lot of people were like, oh, is that pink eye? And I'm going to say this just as a public service announcement because I went through it and yeah. I don't want anyone else to go through it. Um, so if you have a one-time kind of like red infection Right, and your eye is oozing and it's itching, it's painful, and it just came out of the blue. And then you go see your doctor and you get like the drops from pink eye and it goes away. That was definitely pink eye. But if you have a recurring reddening of your eye where it's painful and it's light sensitive and it comes and goes, you got to see an eye doctor if you can. If that's possible, I highly recommend it because I have a thing called dry eye and my tear ducts just every once in a while don't make tears and I get a wind burn in my eye and I have to do very specific things to prevent that, which mostly works, mm -hmm. and to, to heal it when it happens. So, so, But a lot of people will um, feel like they're struggling with pink eye mm -hmm. and you know treat it like that and there's over-the-counter medicines for it. And so they won't know that they're not really suffering from pink eye. Now, I, I, I love horse people. Mm -hmm. I do too. I myself, not being a horse person, I partic particularly find the relationship between people and horses amusing. Uh, so, I think you should be careful. <laughs> well, you know, when people say, I have a spirited horse. I always find spirited to be the most interesting definition. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, you know, spirited could mean like my ball plays, my, my horse plays fetch, which I have seen. Yeah, Very unusual some of them thing. do pay, play a fetch. That's true. Some horses play games. And then you have we the one. We knew a horse that ate live baby chickens. That's just. It, it was just crazy. That horse had been, uh, it had been in the rodeo circuit and uh he was cut very late in life in other words he was gelded very late in life and i don't know what he went through uh he wasn't our horse he was our neighbor's horse i don't that's know what he went okay. through but that's he, not okay he was you had there were escape routes out of his pen there was emergency exits because he's a little bit a little bit not trusting and there was this chicken that kept walking through his pen and she walked through the pen with the chicks and kept eating the chicks Man. and we were just like Okay, that horse has got another level going on. He has some feelings. <laughs> so, all right. The so horses a, have personality. Yeah, yeah. I, I, this was a really good question that came up as, mm -hmm. I, while we were while we were. I'm gonna come uh, here with some dark values and kind of refine things. Make sure I've got a nice. About horses. Nice flow. Okay, ask any questions. Is this considered a negative space painting, asks Victoria? There is actually quite, because this is such a part of the composition, yes. Ooh. Yeah, we have to think about the negative space uh, very seriously when we're painting him, and he's such a part of it and blends in and out of it that we do kind of consider everything around that when we're, when we're working with him. Come in the ears and make sure that these have some nice kind of value there, and we'll... This is looking really nice. Yeah, they do kind of come together pretty quickly. It's a it's sort of a wonderful thing. And it's okay to take a minute and work it out, guys. It is. You, you can have your time. You don't have to put pressure on yourself to get everything resolved in two seconds or know where they're going to go. I'm just kind of creating a little gray. 
So we're looking for certain values along certain parts of him. Definitely back here mm -hmm. at the mouth. Uh, really important little musculature. We can add a shadow in the interior of the nose. And where I want to blend it, I will blend it. My scruffly brush. Where I need to get it a little bit. I'm going to get a little more into my zinc. Mm -hmm. Well, that's too much zinc. When that happens, I just wipe that off and blend that in. Hmm. And that and that can go on. You'll be like, oh, that's a little bit more zinc than I wanted. Come in. Darken that out. I don't want to lose the shadow above his eyes. That's why I'm fighting for it so hard. Okay, so that's what happened to me. I didn't wipe my thing. So that happened to Lindsay earlier. Mm. When you don't wipe your brush, you get a drip, don't you? When you don't wipe your brush, you get a drip. That little highlight here. Little highlights here. Definitely want to kind of highlight between this part of his little uh, above. Like, I'll be putting his forelock down, but I'm going to want to make sure. This isn't a star. It's not a marking. It's just a highlight in the mm. in the hair. But you could make it one if you wanted one. If your horse had one and you wanted to have one, then you could. I want to definitely highlight the front of this eye. Continue to pull like the front of that ear. His ears are upright and alert right now, so he's like paying attention. Get into the brown whenever I need to. And I think I'm going to pull in some of this too. So this part is a bit of a fussy part. Take your time, let it fuss. Make sure we have nice reflections on the parts that need reflections. Right, a little bit there, a little bit there, just to say, oh, that, that happened, right? <laughs> hmm. So in chat, someone said, there's some kids in the Art Sharpa store. <laughs> I was like, I had to go back and reread that. <laughs> like, there's like, some what? Kids. <laughs> Not kids. Yes, kids. we do have some kits and some things for you guys in the store. If you were looking for that, they're there. I was just thinking like, at the mall, there's a bunch of kids in the Art Sherpa store. I was like, there's no Art Sherpa store in the mall. How could there be kids in it? <laughs> kits. Just, you know. Your brain plays funny things. Your brain does, you. man. Your brain absolutely does. So I just... I'm going to have a lot of... Uh... In the before time, there were these things called malls where people would gather together no. and do the shopping experience called No, there's buying. no such thing. I disbelieve your story here. In the before time, we could go to machines and get quarters and put them into other machines and play Here's in them. A little highlight right here.
man, that face just the... comes together. Does it? Yeah. That's good. Let's bring a little kind of curve stroke back here from the jaw. And let's make sure that there's a good shadow going from our jaw into where his jugular is and here so that we see this working into the musculature behind him. Make sure we have a nice shadow behind the ear. Yeah, just a little shadow behind the ear. Pull a little bit of that. That's a very emotive little face you've painted. Yeah. Because they are, aren't they, though? Aren't they, though? Mm hmm Little beings of emotion. I don't know. They look like they're trying to trick you. Like, no, no, go ahead, get on. It'll be a fun ride. No problem. Well, no, my, no. I, I, I had a half Shetland, half Arabian pony that for sure was trying to do that to people. <laughs> but for the most part, horses are not. <laughs> See, I think, I think they're, they're, they're just, I don't know, too smart. Too, too much too going on Too smart? There. They're too smart? Is that what we think? I think so. Too I, smart. I think there's too much... Too much convincing to get the motorcycle to go. <laughs> I think I think maybe start with the idea that we are not a motorcycle. <laughs> I, I'm, I know. <laughs> this is it's a little. Where's the kickstart? I'm gonna bring a little shadow back here. Now you're at the eye, the magic pot. Yeah, we're gonna start to. Well, we got to give it this like beginning base, and if we don't get the base, and we won't really get to feel it. No, so this, I wanna. This is all still in that same step four. Yeah. We're about right. to move to step five when we do the eye. The eye is an involved moment. It is. You know, but we want to make sure we have these other things. I know we all want to r rush on, but we want to make sure we've got these other things worked out before we go anywhere. Oh, no. I just want to make sure we're not missing. Like, we didn't just saunter on into step five while we were talking. No, we did not. Step four is a bit of a journey. That's all right. And you want to catch these highlights as you can. This is my cat's tongue. You could use a round. It's not critical that this be the. We'll highlight across the hair here. Oh, that was a little, just a little. And come in and bring in a little highlight on the nostril. Let's come in and say, oh, inside the nostril, there's a thing. Around the nose. Mm. Think about it. You know, what he's got going on. What has he got going on? Along here, very light gray that we're doing. Mm -hmm. Cool gray, but a very light one. You overstep a value, just come back and take it away, right? Wherever you overstep, just come back. Overstep there. Hmm. The cinnamon. Hmm. Do you ever use a filbert or are you strictly a cat's tongue girl? You know, uh, this cat's tongue is just a pointed filbert, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I'm going to be real candid. It's from the brushes that I, you know, made at the time with silver brush. And um, so there's certainly like a benefit, in, you know, for me to use it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring a little bit of shadow up here. This is a nice shape. 
And, and so I tend to lean into it. That doesn't mean that you can't just as beautifully and easily work with a filbert. You totally can. And I wouldn't want to give the impression of anything else. So in front of his face, I just want to make sure that we can tell the structural bones, right, that should be there. Come up here into the ears and maybe add a little little hair. And you know, at this stage even we can come over. There is a little bit of the go more into our white. This is our titanium white. Let's go. I'm bring a little of that over. I feel like uh we need some more black in that because he's definitely got, you know. I think it's a good place. That's pretty good. So we'll call this step four. You could work longer. You could spend more time in it. You take it where you want to. You use your reference. You can use the grid reference. You know, use use the pa finished painting. Actually, a lot of times that's easier because it kind of shows you where the brush strokes are. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, definitely, definitely you can find your way, you know, uh, doing those things. But there's, there's, this is my end of four. You'd like another hour. Feel free in your own journey. Yeah. In your own journey. But number, we're going to go on. So we've done all the colors that we did and we looked for just a refining highlight and blending of, of the planes of the face and everything that's going on. So we're going to go on to f uh, five now, which is doing the eye. I'm going to stand back and look at it. Stand back and look at that. Look deeply into the painting. And prepare for step five. Right? Do, do, do. Step five is about the eyes. So we're going to get busy. We're going to get into a number four round, and a nice round brush. Did you put up five? I did. Okay, good. You're good. We're going to put out a little of our cad yellow and our cad red. And that's because we're going to use, in the iMix, we use an orange to lighten our burnt sienna. Um, and really kind of create the lighting that will happen in a horse's eye. It's really all about the orange. Mm. First, let's take our number four round and start to define the shape and structure, you know, of his eye. So I'm going to get into my gray. And come here and, you know, kind of start to talk about some lids. You know, at the front here. And he's got a bit of a of a rise. And I can take my brush and even kind of wiggle in shape and find those spaces. Come into your dark values. They are as important in his eye as are the lights. The darks around his eye are just as meaningful, just as critical. And bring a shadow from back here. A little shade a little bit here as it comes up. Just right into the black. And I just like taking a bit of that it forward kind of into a tear duct. When I want to do uh, inside the eye, I do a couple of interesting things. First, let's make an orange. And we're going to take our cad yellow and our cad red and a little bit of our uh, burnt umber. All right, so we've got that kind of mixture of the brown-orange there. 
and let's make our dark brown, which is our burnt uh, 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 sienna and our, and there's no umber, burnt sienna and Mars black. And John's going to start catching me when I'm ca calling out the wrong paint color. Am I? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, man, I got to learn paint colors too. I think, I think, well. Got to learn some paint colors. I think you know them. Some of them. I'm going to. So this is quite dark here, and we leave a little space at the front corner of the eye. You don't want to show a lot of lights in your horse's eye, and the reason is, like, a lot of white. Yeah. Is because if you see a lot of white in a horse's eye, he's uh, upset. He's not a happy horse. Mm. A lot of variety of reasons why you might see a lot of white in a horse's eye. But uh, mostly, uh, they're not reasons that are calm, happy reasons. Yeah. Kind of, kind of creating a little bit of a sense of an inner lid there. So I'm going to get a bunch of this orange into here. Come to the front. The lower li lid. Yeah, we're doing? Yeah. Not huge. It's not big. Let's go right into our sienna. Just our raw pigment. lightly here notice that we're leaving quite a dark outer line yeah it's very important dark outer values are a big deal and we'll kind of blend all these in Really creates that drama right there in his eye. Yeah. I'm going to get my burnt sienna, but just my burnt sienna. I'm going to come around here. His pupil, believe it or not, isn't round. It's kind of elongated. Oh. So when we're doing his eye, I want to like the dark part of his pupil. I'm going to want to make sure that I express how it's that. Now, while I'm here, I can take just a bit of my CAD red into this kind of already sort of messy mix that I made. Because you do want a bit of brown into it. Just a kiss. Not big. That's almost too much of a kiss right there. Mm. Right? So if you get too much of a kiss, come back with your gray. There we go. How nice he's looking. Let's oh, get yeah. a nice highlight here. Let's uh, really define our little lid. He's got a nice forward look. You see a lot of uh, a lot of depth in his eye. Might bring up a little bit of scale on his pupil. Bring up a little bit. Up into here. And then, you know, try to keep in mind that we've got to come, we have over his lid quite a shadow, right? Lids create the shadows. We don't want to lose those. His reflection is really blue and white, but kind of like a, Pretty dark blue, and I don't even worry about anything drawing at the front here. I'm going to put in the blue part. It's got just a little titanium white to it, so as to show. You see how it's there? Yeah. Oh. Getting a wow, little bit of drama in there. so cool. A lot of fun. You can, if you're just being like, pun, you can come in and like, Get like a little of this sort of like crazy green. Just if you're. It's a weird thing, but it adds a big impact because the way the orange and green are kind of contrasts. Uh -huh. It just makes it seem like the, the lid has got a lot more. I'm going to come in with a little bit of my pure titanium white. 
I'll do the other reflections later, but we're going to get this in right now. And then like right here in the tear duct. Mm. And a little bit at the back. That's five. Wow. And go. So there's his eye. Paint horse eyes all day. All day. That's pretty good. I like Didn't horse eyes. Didn't take that long at all. No. Horse eyes is like, that's the fun part. Fun. Now Yay, you're on. Yay, dark pine branches. Now you're on You should staff. be like, if you've been doing all the holiday paintings, you should be like, dark pine branches. Got it. This is step six, right? Step six. six. Dark pine branches. Step six. Dark pine branches. I have to know, do you guys read the whole thing I write? Like, I write a lot of stuff. Oh, yes. There's, I know there are many people who write. They may have been commenting in here in, in about different things, and I can say for sure you have some, you have some follow okay. fans. Okay. Yay. Because <laughs> sometimes you think something is a good idea and that people would want to know it, and then you're like, but wait, maybe they don't want to know that and, whole and weird I, thought that I have about that and folks, art. Folks were saying that they really do like these booklets. So I th I honestly think that over time they're the future of our channel. I so my mission statement is to make art easy and accessible for everyone. Mm -hmm. When I do things on my channel, whether they work or don't work, the intention was to make art easy and accessible for everyone. Yeah. And so I'm always asking myself, does this invite somebody new into art? Does this uh, get somebody who stopped painting for a while to come back and paint again? Does this help somebody uh, break a uh, block that they have? Like, you know, sometimes you'll get a skill block where you just can't get that next set of skills. If I write mini books, does that maybe help somebody who was stuck on the video audio stuff? Because it's a lot going on. It's a lot of stimulus. Maybe that's what they needed to anchor into the next technique. Mm -hmm. So I really feel like they're the future. I think I love them. And John loves them. I'm going to add burnt sienna and bay low green. And then also a little more cad yellow because we only lighten with yellow at this stage I, a little bit, right? And you can, you know, absolutely uh, take your chalk and kind of free sketch, but we sort of know it's like, beep, 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 beep. it comes underneath here. Beep, 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 Make the noise. Totally helps. It does. Beep, 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 Stuff that happened. <laughs> you know, to all the people who made fun of me in high school for adding sound effects to everything, neener, 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 <laughs> it's my job now. <laughs> it's true. You know, I often think that you should be like a radio co-host and you should have like like morning traffic noises that you make during the show. <laughs> you know, I have a whole board of them. The, the thing is, is that it really, in short order, becomes like... A lot? A, a, yeah. It's like the Q Zoo in the morning. It's <laughs> <laughs> like too much, man. <laughs> like me talking is enough occasionally. And I get chatty. I, I get chatty. We get notes on it. And it I'm, continues. This first layer is just sort of laying out your basic structure. You're going to want to define some of your branches as they come out. The color is pretty dark, right? But you're starting to put in the structure that your uh, wreath is going to be built on. Yep. Now, if you guys are up for an 8x8, eight eight, I've got the bluebirds with the icicle window on Thursday, and we're going to work on icicle skills. Mm -hmm. Really, I did that whole painting just so I could teach you guys icicles. You get to paint all the other stuff because I was like, and icicles. Because <laughs> I looked at just icicle paintings, and then I got bored at the idea. Yeah. So you got a whole painting to teach you icicles. You could just skip to the icicle part, and I will, like I'm going to do for this one, I will timestamp it. So you'll notice that I am doing long strokes. I'm gesturally, uh, you know, putting in these, these sort of little branches. I've got it kind of disappearing into perspective over here. You know, we're just putting in that first layer structure. And by now you've kind of figured out that all this greenery, it needs a certain amount of just first layer structure. First layer structure. Just needs a place to hang its hat. I you get just it. need a place to hang your hat and your creativity and stuff.
You can see just coming through here. All the chalk lines are going away as we paint over them. Now, but they do help us find our way through. How many hoot is this? So I feel like if you if you do all the resources. Okay, so here's the thing. On this one, I rated it two, and here's why. If you download the book and you download the resources and you watch the greeting video and you paint with me step by step with the book, at a two hoot space, you should be able to get a painting much better than you would ever expect. Like, mm. like what you'd expect to go do at a painting party, you would definitely be able to do with this, with those resources. I used to teach a painting party, I'm absolutely sure. With enough resources and instruction, uh, you know, people can way exceed what they think that they can do, right? Um, I still say, if you don't feel ready to jump in, watch it, download the mini book, you know, kind of give it a go, come back and do some one who, ones that we've got, like the birds. Mm -hmm. And then if that worked for you, be like, oh yeah, I'm going to come in and do this horse. Yep. You know, if the quiet table lessons are better for you, you know, come on, come on Thursday. Normally the quiet table lesson is Tuesday because Angela Anderson is on after me and I like to be able to predict where I'm going to end a little better, but today it got away from me. <laughs> Because things went wrong. Things happen. Oh, man. We had so many things happen today. Not on purpose, but they did. It was, it was animaniacs up in here. It was craziness. It, it was a lot, man. It was a lot. I'm going to bring mean, some little branches, and I want to kind of really have this greenery be in this area. And then greenery? it comes through and really connects there. But we'll have, as you can see, branches coming out this way, really showing out that way. You know, I like a branch that shows out. Like a Bruno Mars branch? Mm-hmm. We're going to show have some up. Sparkle. We're going to show out. Got a little sparkle. There's nothing wrong with that. A little tinsel. A little tinsel. Because I'm shiny. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you can be shiny. I like shiny. Shiny. Sparkly. Crab really spoke to me. Crab really spoke to me. Oh my goodness. My nice little break from the world, isn't it? Mm -hmm. In this place, there's nothing but green branches and I don't gotta worry about none of it. Now you can take a little yellow into your deep color at this stage and kind of also include some of that around here. Yeah. Right? These are these are things that you're building up from, so you know, feel like you can. The beginnings of structure. Life on this planet began with the beginnings of structure on primordial soup. Mm-hmm where energy conversion happened near geothermal vents. After millions of years, that became a horse. Wasn't that cool? <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Some of his evolutionary uh, uh, advantages are he's cute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what, but that's not an acceptable answer on a test. I'll tell you what, I'm doing homeschool with my kids and trying to determine evolutionary advantage is cute. Well, absolutely true. Yeah. Uh, once human beings became involved uh, is not ever a correct answer on a test. So it's like you've got to be like older college. I keep telling my kids, get to college, you'll love it. <laughs> get to college, you'll love it. I have to say though, I want to shout out the heroes, the teachers, the support of the schools to the teachers, like all of the support staff at the schools that are making this happen, the teachers that are dealing with this, and and I, I'm gonna say this, like parents, you're heroes too. You are. I get it, we're parents, and you're working, and you're trying to make all this crazy work. But the teachers are extra heroes because they're dealing with us when maybe we're not having our best day, and we're not feeling our joy, and our kids, and all the stress and everything. So extra love, extra love to the teachers who are coping with COVID. Yeah. My daughter, though, my eldest is like, this is my jam. Homeschool is my jam. She's like, I will go to college virtually. I'm like, no, you will go to college in a dorm. No, virtually. <laughs> Save money. Do not waste money. I'm like, okay, that's actually a pretty solid explanation. 
for why you don't want to do it. But still. But still. Don't you want to have the experience? She's like, I don't care. I just get the education and get working. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's my kid. I'm bringing some little branches there that are maybe showing over and a little bit here. And you can see that it just builds up, right? Yeah. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Did we just finish step six? Yes, wow. we did. You're all ready. You let me know when you're ready, and I can I show am, step seven. I'm going to sip my water. How's everybody doing? I can't see chat, so I, oh, I don't know Good. if I should run over there and or just sip my water. Can I show them step seven? Yeah, you can show them step seven. Step seven. So everybody thinks this is pretty cool. And, oh, yeah. Uh, Karen, uh, is that Karen? Yeah, Karen says she did her entire bachelor's degree online and loved it. Is that Karen Scott? Uh, no, it is Karen Wick. Karen Wick. Hi, Karen Wick. See, that's smart. I think I think people are doing that now. Like, why pay for dormitory fees and food and all this, you know, just like at home and, and as you can. I think there is. My daughter gave me a good argument for it. I was like, huh, you have thought your thing out, girl. Thinking. Thinking. You've been thinking. I think she had her first driving day, didn't she, just recently? Yeah, I took, her, took her out driving the other day. You took her out driving the other day. Yep. It was pretty, pretty so straightforward. So glad it wasn't me. Oh, it was pretty straightforward. We oh, went to my the gosh. Parking lot. She drove around. <laughs> I would be screaming. <laughs> Anyone who's driven in a car with me knows that I'm not a fun co-pilot. Because I, I, I just like, I'll be like, ah! And they're like, I'm just changing lanes. <laughs> My daughter and I in a car together, that would be combustible. Okay. That would be a lot. All right. Hi, Twixie. So we're going to come in on step seven, and we're going to add some highlights and some yellows. We're going to keep doing what we did, but we're going to really kind of make the branches purdy. Keep doing the doing. Keep doing the doing. So we got a little bit of our burn, brown into our green, but now we're going to lighten up. All right. Lighten it up with the yellow, as you can see that we're doing. You know, and then get into some bright green that's on the brush. We're just intermixing, mixing on the canvas. Let's make some beautiful little piney boughs. Oh, my piney boughs. Are so pretty. They're so pretty. And where you need dark green, just go back and get dark green. You got it right here, right? It's all mm -hmm. right here. You've just added more yellow into the mix. All the green you need. Right, more highlight into the mix. And then when you need a little uh, white into it, you get white into it too. Look at that. See how that pops it? Mm -hmm. Little flicking strokes. Works out pretty well. Lots of pop, lots of contrast. Just doing little flicks. You're going to love the pine cones. They're the same ones we did with the candles. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's a good way to do pine cone. Now, I don't have to do all my highlights because when I put my lights in, I will put some highlights on my branches around where those will go. Like bright pops of highlights, so. Hmm. Amethyst asks, this is a beautiful horse. What is his name? I don't know. You guys name him. What is his name? Chat game. Chat what game. is his name? What is his name? What? Could be a Fred. No. Or an Ed. No. Or a Ted. I have lots of rhyming names I can go through here. Why do you got to give him a crazy name? I... Fred's Respect him. Fred. Respect him. There are lots of good Freds and Teds and Eds. Those are all good names. There's a Mr. Ed. That is not a horse name. His How can you say Mr. Ed's not a horse name? Because <laughs> I was not a horse person. That wrote, I'm telling you. <laughs> Amy says Ebony. <gasps> That's good. That's a good name. Tammy says Buck. Good Chrissy name. says Jerry the horse. <laughs> You and, you and John are like yeah, in the same, same naming camp. That's right. Jerry's yeah. a good name. Jerry's a good name. All names are good names. 
Magic is a good name. Ooh, oh, oh, black magic. Midnight. Midnight, uh, that's good. Harry the horse. Harry the horse. Mm-hmm. Noel is a male name. I didn't know that. Leon the stallion. There we go. Sir Bucks a lot. That's a that's a that sounds like a horse I would end up with. Yeah. John, John annoys the horses. <laughs> Jeff the horse. <laughs> and then there's this there's like so if this were like if we had to name the horse like we name our show titles, this would be Horsey the Horse. Yeah, this is uh uh, black, black horse, horse on black canvas with Christmas wreath. Yeah, I was gonna say black horse with wreath. <laughs> black horse with wreath. That's what I gotta name it. That's what I have to name it mm-hmm. because Google and YouTube does not reward my creativity. They don't go. I love your name, uh, black amethyst at night stallion. Yeah, I love it, black amethyst stallion. You know, like they would be just like, no. It's like, oh, is it an amethyst? And then it would show my video to a bunch of amethyst people who wouldn't click it. Because it's a horse painting. Sorry, I'm getting loud. But it's a horse painting, so they're not going to click it. And it's, it's going to be like, nobody likes your video. You should just, just be honorary. Uh, just be honest and call the horse honorary. Honorary. I'm honorary. There's onyx. That's Do you know what I'm one. saying? Like, if you name your stuff colorfully, and I tell my mom this all the time, right? My mom's a ginger cook, and she's a YouTube channel, and I tell her this all the time. I'm like, I, and mom, it's a, don't let her name things creatively. Uh Make her use keywords. How did you find this video? That's the name. There's a YouTube tip for you. How'd you find this video? That's your video name. What step are we on? Eight. Eight. I think I have an eight graphic somewhere. Let me see, <laughs> if, I can, let me see if I can find an eight graphic. <laughs> step eight. Oh, he looks good. Step eight. It's okay. He's okay. He's okay. Where'd you okay. go? I just what? went to look at him again. You want to go look at him in step I'll eight? I'll look at him. Eight. Eight will be great. We're going to paint a pine cone. There is no step eight. What? S- seven, eight. Oh, because seven, eight, nine? No. Seven, eight, eight. And left nine. So we have no eight. Just seven and nine. We do. It's okay. Print out the book. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> you again are assuming the internet has a sense of humor or gets a joke. And you I, are wrong. <laughs> I pushed a button. <laughs> oh. I'm going to continue to use my number eight cat's tongue for this next part, but you could use a round brush if you don't find that you're getting the control that you need. Okay. I'm going to start putting in pine cones. Pine cones start out as a Mars black uh, burnt sienna base. My paint is doing what's called skinning, so I may put out fresher paint to improve the flow. Right now I'm seeing if water will get me there, and if it will and I don't lose, uh, I don't lose coverage, then I'll stay where I'm at. So here we go. We don't want it to be super wet, but we do want it to be dark, but brown. I'm going to come here. I'm going to make a little pine cone. Go there, man. Pine cone goes touch, 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 touch. Yeah, it's a little gloppy. I'll put it in mm. some fresh paint. You're making a little, little pine cone. Make the pine cone. Put out the fresh paint because your brush doesn't like it. Apparently, it's we, not fresh. We briefly buffered. We buffered we, just for a moment. Some briefly, people, some someone said there was a buffer. Oh no! I, mm-hmm. Yeah, it just ruins good videos, doesn't it? YouTube should pay attention. All right, better paint. So right. it hasn't been out skinning, which is that gloppy skinny, not thick. Because what it is is it's curing. I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna add. I'll just put up a little pine cone here, right? Like a little pine cone. Oop. Yeah, that's better. This will work on all your pine cone things, by the way. We need to pine cone after this. Hmm. These will be, and we're going to be adding um, little leaves to our pine cones to improve their, like, flow into the painting. We'll blend them in. We need a little pine cone right here. Little touch pulls. This is this is a touch pull stroke, and we're tiling it, and that layering creates the texture that makes the pine cone. My pumpkins are all open and releasing seeds, apparently. Mm. I'm going to go here and then here. So I go here. Pine cone. And then I'm going to want to kind of round that out. 
at the bottom. But again, I got needles going over it, so don't feel like panicky. There you go. Basic pine cone little shapes. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Ooh. Hmm? T is like the horse is named pine cone. The horse could be named pine. He could be named pine cone. That's a good horse name. Now on, on my, uh, I've got my brown here. I'm going to put out some more like burnt sienna and that'll be my next layer. And then I'll do my highlight layer with the yellow. Same brush rinsed out, not too wet, loading up on the toe. Let's come here and start to create pine cone shapes. See how we tiled that in? That's how you tile it in. You're just tiling oh, it in. I see. You don't want to paint out all your uh, shadows because the shadows help give you form. Yes, I like some of the. If he was going to be a racehorse, I'd name him Zippo. Oh my gosh! Because he's on fire. Thank goodness we are never going to be able to afford a racehorse. Yeah. Mm. What are you thinking? You just. I'd name him like, like. Oh, you're on the name thing. Yeah, yeah. That's what you're just, I'm like, I'm all thinking there's a problem with the painting and you're all like stewing on a horse name. Like I would include the sire's name and then probably like, so like say it was a, uh, you know. <gasps> Ooh. I'm going back to Fred the horse. No. Sorry. We're going to, I'm sorry. I don't mean to yell. Please don't subscribe. <laughs> it's not my fault. You horse name it to it. I'm a good art teacher, I swear. It's the horses that get her up there. <gasps> you know what? Mm. Yeah, there's some good there's some good good names out there. There are good names. None of them have you suggested. I'm gonna add some yellow to this mix so that my brown's in here and I've got a little of my yellow in there. Right. That's pretty nice. And let's get some white into that. Oh, it's too much. Too bright. And that's whenever you get it, if you're like, oh, it's a little too much, you just come back and fix it. Use the highlights that define the pine cone. Do they? Yeah, look, you can see the pine cone now because of the highlights. Pine conies. Mm -hmm. My pine cone is so piney. It's never, never whiny. Sometimes it is shiny because glitter. <laughs> I am not a musician. <laughs> and that's okay. Because <laughs> that is not my skill. And I don't got to be everything. Boy, that horse eye looks really good. Now I got some pine cones. You do. Pine conin. Pine conin. That's what you did. Mm. Pine conin. Guess what? That was all of the debate. You know, if we don't give this horse a name, you could probably accompany him through a desert. <laughs> I want to flick my book at you, but I need it to do step nine. Step <laughs> nine. Without, without <laughs> that, how would you have step nine? Step nine. Oh. All right. So in step nine, we're going to um, put in our Christmas bulbs and start our twinkle lights. Our twinkle lights are like the most involved fussy thing in the whole painting. I know that's shocking, but it, it, it's super beginner friendly. It's just time consuming. However, they have big zzz. So we're going to do them anyways. Let's put out some quinacridone magenta. Mm. 
Mm. So is which paint are you putting it out there? I am putting quinacridone magenta and cad red medium out oh, there. Okay. We're going to be working uh, also in the cad yellow, but not any of the white. I'm going to get a round brush. I think I'll just do this one unless it, well, yeah, it'll, it'll be fine. I can, it's, it's a little small for what I'm doing. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I might switch up to like a number 12 round, but no one ever has a number 12. Oh. Nobody ever expects the Spanish Inquisition or that they need a number 12 round. So I'll do it with a number four. Mm. I think we all expect the Spanish Inquisition now. Well, now we wouldn't be so surprised. We'd be like, you have done this before. Mel Brooks really, really <laughs> made that work. Did he know? So we're doing this. This is our dark red. And come here. Make a nice round ornament right there. Nice. Just circle around. Get a round shape you like. And take a minute to get the muscle control to do certain shapes like round shapes or straight lines. Don't stress on it. Nito was just asking a very good question. I would love to answer Nito's question. I bet it is Nito. I'm sorry, I did it. It's uh, N-I-T-A. Nita. Nita. Oh, not Nito. Nita. <laughs> yeah. That's you. I couldn't That's hear me. you. I know, I know. So she says, is there a booklet for this? <gasps> yes. It's free. You download it. And it's wrote so many things in it to make this easier for you. So many things. I even like cover what colors we're using in each step. You do. I do. That's pretty cool. Well, I did that just in case people paint over several sessions on different days. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have to feel like they put, had to put out all the same colors again if they didn't need to. That way you know what you needed. Yeah. It's a little thing I could do for you because I care. So I'm writing you this booklet just to let you know I care. <laughs> Teaching you some art is a part of me. Half circle here. Right, mm -hmm. a half circle. And I'm happy to do it. I will do it as much as I can. You know. My current goal is one a week. One a week. You get a booklet less a booklet lesson and a lesson with no booklet. <laughs> So whatever works for you. I'm going to go bigger with this one. All right. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I like it. Do you like it? Mm -hmm. You just always say I like it. Well, I don't ever not like it. No, that's not true. Don't let him fool you. Sometimes he doesn't like it. Mm, no. No? You always like it? I don't, I don't, I can't really think of a painting I didn't like. I think some of the ones I did in college weirded you out. Oh, I mean, like, since we've been doing the show, you do a lot of stuff that's weird. <laughs> I mean, like, all the time. I don't understand it. But <laughs> here on the show, I like <laughs> show everything you do. <laughs> it's that fun question. Why are you naked in this? <laughs> <laughs> why, why is, why? People don't And you're bend screaming. Like What's happening? I don't understand. Are, are you bad? Are you okay? No, I just needed an A. <laughs> just going for the A, dude. John had to raise the bar. Shock art. <laughs> what did I do? I don't know. You don't, don't remember do what art. you did? Because I remember what you did. I don't do shock art. Huh? You did do do shock art. That was shock art. That was shock art. Oh, well, maybe. For sure, for sure, for sure. Everybody was shocked. You can see it in their faces when they <laughs> read the explanation card. I mean, the marbles? Yep. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> that was that was not shock. That's performance art. That you just That the... is actually still technically shock art, and shock art very often is performance art because it's so dramatic and interactive with the audience. It's like at least that's my theory, and I'm sticking to I it. I don't know, man. I'll, 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 re, I'll tell you what. 
at some point I'll re put the installation together. Are and you gonna are you gonna uh, already, no, are you I gonna saved, use the have, original or yeah, are you gonna go new? No, I have the original marbles. I <laughs> Did we, did we move them? I got... You know what? That's a set of marbles you don't lose. <laughs> okay, so we're having a private no, no. joke, honestly, but John won't let me tell you why. It's... You know what? You guys have to watch the show to figure this one out. This is a big... It's a big inside thing with the marbles. I think that should be like... um, Like, to, when we hit 700,000 subscribers, John has to read no, you the marbles. Million. It's a million... Is that a million? It's a million marble joke. I'll tell you what. I'll put the marble machine music on, and I'll pull out the marble everything, and you can hear the inside joke behind the marbles. Uh, uh, but you're only going to do it at a million? At a million. That's good. All right. Well, if we get to a million subscribers, you can, John, will do will, the marbles for you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling confident. You may be sorry he did. <laughs> you may be like, why? oh, Why? Like, when I see those, like, art competition shows, and they're like, do some shock art, and I'm like, oh, no, oh, no. And then they do, like, this is me nude. I'm like, oh, my gosh, you have missed a lot, person. <laughs> Did no one tell you? <laughs> Stuff has gotten real. We've gotten real about it. Boop, 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 boop. So. What are you doing there with that? We are doing the Twinkle Stars. I've taken my cat. Yeah, you've distracted me. I, I take my cat <laughs> yellow and my cat red. I made a very light orange. And I'm doing little concentric circles. And this is the first layer of Twinkle Lights. And they're not solid circles. I tend to break them. You want to kind of break them up? Yeah. Making kind of lighty things. They're very gestural and loose at this stage. Right, so it's very chill for you. That's good. So now I'm going to come back. And I think I'll just use my cat's tongue. Uh, let me, can I dry this without taking the power out? Uh, you know what? There's only one way to find out. I hope this video doesn't end. <laughs> so what happened was, is earlier today we were on Facebook and we found out that uh, the hair dryer will trip the breaker, but not only during the winter. So we must have some other kind of heating device that's on that same circuit that we weren't aware of because we've tested this before. And uh, I thought the circuit was clear, but turns out it did not. It was a uh, it was a pop circuit. So I'll be doing some more electrical a little bit later in this week. So I told him about the pop circuit earlier. Do 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 do. Yes. Now I'm gonna put on the middle range of red, which is just pure cad red, which is super fun. Or come on, all of these like up here, we're gonna paint up. Uh, this upper part of this with a little bit of the pure cad red and then we'll come here and start to talk about the little highlight mostly it'll be right here I'm just coming through with a little a little bit of cadmium mm -hmm. that really pops those out that one video about the history of the planet I can't get it out of my head like whenever I say I want to go pre-cadmium, <laughs> they're like all oh, harmonically. What video was that? Uh, gosh, I forget the name of the series. I've seen a bunch of the ones that guy that guy does. They're really oh funny. So good, so good, man. And I don't know it, so my mods can't even put up oh, which one it is. I'll see if I can find it for you. So good, it's the best video, guys. If you haven't seen this video. It is like the best explanation in the history of the world and mankind I have ever seen. It's super fun. My kids watch it over and over, but it's way less annoying than Baby Shark. So I don't mind that at all. And I like to watch it whenever it's on. And sometimes I hear it in my head because I just think, because now we have legs. <laughs> we can live on the land. Yep, it's Bill Wirtz. Bill Wirtz? Mm -hmm. Bill Wirtz, can you drop a link? History of the entire world, I guess. 
<laughs> is that what it says? History of the entire world, I guess. I be, yeah. I'm going to make a light orange here, but it's going to be definitely darker than the orange that we have on the sparkles, but light on the ornaments. And I'm going to come up here where there are highlights, and as you can see, add a little bit of an orange yellow highlight. And John's going to drop that in. And you guys should definitely see that if you are a person with a sense of humor and like history. If you're you a person without both, a sense of humor, you will not like it. Okay. Like if you take things super duper serious, maybe not your favorite video. However, you're watching me, so mm. I would... I, I would have to question that you would be a serious person and watch me. Not that you wouldn't be a serious artist, because I actually am a serious artist, no matter how goofy I act. And, um, so, but I have to assume that you have a light heart and a, and a, and a kind of jovial nature mm. to be here. But then Tila Tequila watched us, and she clearly does not have either of those things. Aspiration. Aspiration? What? She's aspiring to, to be, be a painter. That's a noble goal. It is. It is, and I really wish her well. It's surprising that that's... And support. I like to be the support for people. <sighs> you know what else I like to do? Watch paint dry. Yeah, it was very exciting. No, I mean, that's what I do with you all the time. All the time. So you can see that we've created some shape and value. By having a shadow, a middle range, and a highlight, we make the balls seem round. Mm -hmm. Isn't that seems spherical. Wow, this game is fast. Spherical. It seems like you're almost on step 10. I am on step 10. There's nothing to do but go to step 10. 10. Yep, step 10. Ugh. On step 10. I am going to finish the branches, making sure I know it. Finish the branches. <laughs> Check my book here. And add some highlights to the bulbs and go the next step on Twinkle Light. So let's do that. Choo, choo, choo. My Maria, water is dirty. Maria was like, I've seen that history of the world. My son showed it to me. It's the best, right? It is. Be right back. Can it's I go behind you? Yes. <laughs> you can go anywhere you want in this studio because you're wireless. I know. I could just be like, you know, guys, I'm so tired of this lesson. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going to. Don't don't worry. It's not happening. Is right. this so John's full-time water. job? Yes. Huh? Sheila was like, is this John's, John's full-time job? Yeah, it job. is now. I get to heckle my wife full-time full on YouTube. That's my that job. was a weird family decision, I have to tell you guys right there. Because mm -hmm. my husband is very good in his industry, so it was a weird decision to do that. We, I had to applaud my husband to even think that that was a thing to do. Well, he, I, uh, I learned he does a lot. Well. I learned a lot while I was doing business stuff. I he like did. Doing, like doing it here better. Well, I like our, I like our clients so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So we're going to start out with our dark green. It's really exactly, you know, what we had going on before, right? So we're going to put some of this here. And uh, let's put a little of the dark green there. Because right? we're going to blend it in. All right. Oh, yeah. That makes sense there. What? How you're... Uh, how Tuck them in? Yeah. We're going to put these little ornaments to bed and tuck them into their blanket of needles. Mmm. Tia. That's a good name. She's naming her horse Ornament. <laughs> I like that. That's a good name for a horse. It's a very good name for a horse. And you could call him Henri for short. <laughs> Gosh. <gasps> Who are you? I still, I'm going to stay with Fred because I'm lazy. And it, it's, I'd be like, Fred, come here. And Fred be, Fred be like, I'm all about it. It's a good name. I'm going to get a little yellow into the mix like we did before. Come in and put some little highlights on these. Because see, in my mind, Fred's a very laid back surfer horse. Well, then his name would be Chad. <laughs> Are or Shane. Maybe, but only if he's from the the West Coast. What if he's an East Coast surfer? <laughs> they do exist. 
Have you? <laughs> Stop it! Don't be funny. He could, he could be like a pony of the chicken. Oh, a little sh- surfer pony. Name Fred. Yes, well, you know, in a Disney movie, perhaps. <laughs> he's a, he's a, he, he ran with the chinkany pony. Is that the way you say them? The, the, the ponies that swim? The chinkatigs. Yeah, those ponies. I'm sorry. I have a cackle, and I apologize for that. It's not pleasant. It's just what I was born with. Fred the surfer horse. I hope you guys forgive me for my cackle. My cackle. You don't cackle. I do a little bit. I feel like I do. I have a bit of a cackle. Just a little of one. Now I'm going to add a bit of yellow and white. Um, I'm going to put a little fresh white because the other whites have really skinned at this point. We are literally almost done. Mm. We are. It's very close. Very close. So you can watch the history, the complete history of the world, question mark. Have you seen, I've, or you could go by, uh, see Angela Anderson after and say, hi. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You could do both. And go check out my mom on Mondays. Mm-hmm. Monday, 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 Ginger Cook Live in the evening. In the evening. Doing mayhem. Oh, my gosh. On the last video, uh-huh. so they had the splash screen, but they were streaming and they didn't know they were streaming. <laughs> and it went on a really long time. <laughs> and it's not like they were fighting or anything it's something like that they don't really fight but there was like all this like noise like a restaurant or something getting ready <laughs> and then they're like oh are we live <laughs> super is cute. that how this thing works it was I, super cute i, I was it like all. it was a really pretty painting it was just a real funny bit i'm always like is this thing on <laughs> yeah it's very much that moment is it on so this is a little titanium white and cad yellow, and we're going to bring around some of these little kind of highlights into our previous glow marks, mm. our glow bugs, our glows. Glow your glows, man. Glow. Nobody knows how much you glow but you. So glow as much as you can glow and oh. grow as much as you can grow. <laughs> this horse has left the ranch, just right out there, just like, just gone. Glow, glow, glow. Mm-hmm. Glow, glow, glow. Glow, 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 glow. He feels these glows. They're meaningful to him. They are. And he loves them. Chicken. And now I'm going to get a bunch of yellow Mm -hmm. and green with some white. And a couple of places I'll put a little highlight. Because the light is shining. So then just like, are these battery operated lights or is that horse trailing an extension cord? (laughs) (laughs) Definitely, these are magic lights. (laughs) They're fairies. They're magical. The fairy lights. He's loved by fairies. They think it's wonderful. We've had battery lights for a while. I suppose it could be battery lights on. Mm Mm-hmm. So those little glows that just like that little bit of yellow helps oh. those branches feel like they've got light on them. It's just a little touch that you can do, but it makes a big difference for how your finished piece will be. Like if you're ever doing any of these lights, ever these lights on any greenery, on anything, remember to cast a little light around them. Mm. Just a weird little thing that you can do to make your painting better. Even if you're starting out, there are all these weird little things that you can do to make your painting better. Oh, yeah. You know, you don't have to be like the most experienced person in the world to just make your pain better. Mm-hmm. We can do it you together. Can do it. Together. I'm fine. It's getting late, and I'm getting that weird I get when I'm late. Mm-hmm. I'm getting my weird on. Look, Fred's like, let's let's do this. Let's and this paint, has been water, paint too. Paint. Paint. We're on step just 11. Just been water, too. All right. 
So I have to dry all this. All right. You dry. Oh, wait. No, I forgot the reflections. Oh, did you? Mm-hmm. All right. Because there were reflections at the stage. We're still on stage. step 10, right? Yeah. All right. We're about to do step 11, but we got to do this. Got you got to go. Bitch, bitch. Break up a little reflection. Let your light glow a little. Mm-hmm. The hot part of the reflection is impacted by the lights that are near it. What do you mean by the hot part of the reflection? This bright spot of reflection when it's really hot is because oh, there's lights yeah. near it. So if you remember to put one of those where light might be reflecting on it, that'll help it also be a little bit better. Nice. Just a little bit. Just a little bit of your love for me. All right. Now we're going to go do step 11. Which is sparkles. Sparkles. Step 11. Yes, sparkles. You know what? Mm. That could be the name for the horse. <laughs> sparkles. Sparkles the horse. Mr. Sparkles Sassy Pants. Mmm. Mr. Sparkles <laughs> Sassy Pants Stomps a Troll. So, horses' names that have been in my life Whiskey, Eagle. I named him myself, but, but no, it was Blue Mound Eagle. Blue Mountain. Blue Mound Eagle. Fortel's Troubadour. Because he was from the Fortel. Fortel's know. Troubadour. Uh. Mm, uh, uh, Bent Duha. We used to call her Bent Duha. Huh. <laughs> uh, what, was, what was Arrow's name? Uh, uh, his name? His Arrow was his short name. He had a really, really long name. Hmm. Uh, but is escaping me at the moment. And my mom's horse, who was super crazy, was Cappy's Comet. Super crazy. Supposed to eat his own pee. Now what do you, what do we... <laughs> like, he would pee, <laughs> and then he would see it. It would scare him, and he'd run away. <laughs> you'd just be sitting there at the bar, and at the horse pee, and then you see him go, <laughs> and the other horse would be like, what happened? And then one of the smarter ones would be like, oh, he just peed. It's cool. It's pee. <laughs> Tammy's like, you have a real thing for 70s music. No, I, 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 maybe just today, because I think we, we go, we run the gambit of music. There's some, have I been doing 70s music today? I think I think a lot of them has been like has a horse with no name, and mm. yeah, there's been a lot of a lot of vintage 70s rock, yeah, references. Yeah, though John does like Daft Punk, but then he also I, likes Caravan like Palace. A lot He's of a very eclectic and evolved sense of music. I like those. French disco. What can I say? Everybody like French disco. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> okay. So, also, I'm going to be honest. I like Eurovision. Go Iceland! Okay, so... um, No, I'm for Iceland. I am. Every year, cheer Iceland. Iceland! I just think one of these years, man. One of these years. One of these years. Okay. Right. Okay. What that are you is only what are you doing here? Into if you're into Eurovision. What are we right. doing? So we got a sparkle. Sparkles the stallion. Sparkles the stallion. All right, I need to dry all this. You talk to them. I got to dry this. I, me? What do I got to talk to them about? I don't know. I don't know. More important I'll stuff than Eurovision, stuff. which I just did. Okay, so Eurovision is this thing. If you haven't like checked it out, there's there's a really good uh, movie that was. And, I, and it was done with a troupe of actors that I we watch a lot. But it was it was a movie about Eurovision. It's worth seeing. Um, there's a couple competitions that happen in Europe that America doesn't seem to care about. I don't know why, but you know, uh, that's one of them. What what? That's a, there's a whole bunch of competitions that happen over in Europe that America doesn't seem to care about, so we never get to see them, which is kind of lame. But that's one of them. We never get to see it. No, you can see it. You can see it anytime. Well, I know, but like Americans in general aren't walking around going, have you seen the latest Eurovision? It's like, it's just not a... <laughs> it's because we call... I know, it's like, but it's just... Football, a, soccer. It's I just... know. We get, it's like, sports, sports, sports. Go sports. Manchester! Anyways, Go I'm fine. <laughs> but I mean, like, my sports is... Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah, no, it's true. We, we have that. So I'm going to put out, this is my trick for doing this. This is golden fluid acrylic, titanium white. I love it. It's amazing. If you don't have this, you could use craft paint. And if you don't have craft paint, you can just add water to your white till it is a thin fluid consistency. 
The other thing that I am going to do is I've got to get out a straight edge. And the reason I get out a straight edge is because, darn it, it's hard to do a straight line mm -hmm. without one. So I'm going to use this. This is a small T-square. Small one. Smallish T-squares. And I'm going to grab a detail brush. And this is number one detail brush. Ooh. And I'm going to go up first. And then I'm going to go down. And you're going to make a little. Yep, that's it. And then I'm going to wipe, flare. wipe my thing. And then I'm going to come right here. And I'm going to go up. And this is slow and not fast. Leah's like, British people don't care about Eurovision. We turn off the channel. What? I think she's joking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's had some emojis there. <laughs> I think the joke is that Eurovision doesn't get a lot of attention. Did you guys get taken out because of Brexit? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, please. I'm, I, I realize. Okay, so in all fairness, don't get mad and don't we angry don't, emoji. No. I understand it's politics where you live, but I don't understand it. So it's not really for it's, me. It's like we have our own politics shenanigans over going here. on and it's all I can pay attention to. So like I, I, I made a Brexit joke and I'm sorry. We're just holding our breath until it's all over. Look, and because of that, I was punished with an uneven line. I got punished immediately by the art gods. We, we broke our own rule, which is no politics. We're trying to be funny. But that's, that's what it was. We're trying to be funny. But we do try not to pull people into politics because generally they're painting to calm down. And in our experience, politics does not help people it's do that. It's not de-stressful. It does not. It does not give them the calm zen space that they need. Because they feel like they got to, like, if you say something political, then they got to say their political thing. And then, and then the yelling starts. And then you're in a discussion about politics and rarely do discussions about politics work out into something that is peaceful and evolving. not anymore i mean it does in france the french couldn't possibly i've been in france they talk all the things that we can't talk you know, they talk all the, the things they're challenged they like they're it, it seems like in a in, in a french debate it, the objective is to upset your opponent but be friends afterwards no, well i mean it is to uh, well, I, okay, actually, I would say, in my opinion, it is to speak, right, with, it is a thoughtful conversation. Like, you may speak with passion, and you will speak thoughtfully, but you don't attack the character of the other person for seeing the world differently. No, we, we speak from <laughs> French people based on experience of going to France and living with Canadian French. No, no, they were just, French Quebec Canadian people. No, I was. Uh, we were not living with any French Canadian. They were not I French did, Canadian. I did. Well, we were like all my friends were French Canadian. Okay, well, they no, weren't. mine were from you know, Carcassonne, so they're proper French. That's I, cool. <laughs> I tell you just, what. I just got in trouble so many different ways. <laughs> you did. The ways in which I just got myself in trouble is just hard to count. I'm just, oh, I, I feel like the subscriber count just went down by 600. No. <laughs> Where they were like, Ugh! No, I was very lucky I got to go to France with my mom and stay up in the Black Mountains above the Sea of Carcassonne. And we got to meet so many people. And that, so there were so many things that I noticed were different from back home. Like one of the things I noticed, like living there, is like nobody was yelling. No. Like, and I didn't realize how much yelling just kind of goes off, just generally around me. And like, I'd be like in the Brico Marche, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, there were so many people, and it was so quiet. And the first time I heard somebody like being an angry customer, I was like, shocked. <laughs> I was like, it's an angry customer. He wasn't French. <laughs> And that's when I realized that everything that I was ever told about uh, occupation of France was incorrect. No, nope. not to change the subject, but what brush are you using? I am using a number one detail art Sherpa brush with my name on it. And you're just going through there and adding some. I'm adding first I add vertical lines and then vertical I'm add horizontal lines and then I have to add angle lines. Mm -hmm. A good twinkle takes some work. Sometimes I do them like fast and messy where I just freehand them, but they always end up being just a little wonky. So this time I was like, I will do good twinkle because you can already see they're like flaring beautifully. They are, yeah. They're flaring beautifully. Water and light do straight lines when they're supposed to. 
So I got to remember to keep my lens like to reflect that, you know, truth. And then when I have all that done, guess what I get to do? Ooh. Horizontal lines. Horizontal lines. Are also good. And I will probably uh, freehand in the angles just because we got to go home someday. Yeah. But I highly recommend when you do this, you don't. Just take your time and enjoy your sparkling. You know, enjoy it. I. It's really interesting to see, like, I'll be on the platform, like, looking at other, like, our channels. I'll be like, I know that flare. That's my flare. <laughs> Wow, that's Looking just good. coming in. Just doing it. Oh my gosh, we are so close to done. I can't even do it. So you. close. I, I would say we are under 10 minutes. Under 10, yeah. Yeah, which is kind of a bummer, to be it really is. honest. Because I've really been enjoying my time with everybody. This didn't, didn't take too terribly long to do. No, it's not too bad. The 16 by 20s are a little slower than the 8 by 8 canvases for sure. Mm. That's why I do more complicated paintings right now on the 8 by 8s. Um, I... Uh, you know, maybe some of the landscapes I'll pop up. Like, I'm doing the, the two upcoming, the cup and the um, beautiful blue landscape I'm doing on this size canvas. You can have a prop, so you can have a proper painting hanging on the wall. We're going to do it. We're just going to do it. It's just what we're going to do, okay? We're going to do it. Mm-hmm. If you are brand new to the channel and you subscribe because you're like, oh my gosh, free money, books, steps, lessons, everything I need to succeed. Yes. And you go, and she has a thousand lessons before this. I do want to say, yes, that's true. But in full candor, we just started doing the step by step this Christmas. And there's like, oh, like 1,100 lessons that are step by steps. But, and they have traceables and they have all those resources. But the mini book is new. Mm. So. Because somebody was like, where are all the mini books? I'm like, dude, I just started. <laughs> Give me three more years and there'll be a thousand of those as well. That's right. So now, are we almost on step 12? We are. We just have to do cross lights. Is that step 12? No. Oh, after that. Says step after the side sparkles. After the cross light sparkles, we're going to. See? That's a twinkly. You got to go all all in or it's not twinkly. Mm. You can't shortcut your twinkle. When you twinkle twinkle your little star, you better wonder how many twinkles you put in and don't be lazy about it. <laughs> just kidding. I am often just kidding. Mm -hmm. I uh You can get me riled up. But you got to do one of the big cardinal sins. Yeah. Yeah. Then, oh my gosh, look out. <laughs> look out. Look out. I have, I have the fire in me. Always surprises people when they run into it. They're like, this is the line. I'm like, obviously this line. This is a big line. This is a human line. Don't do mm -hmm. this stuff. This isn't an opinion. This is a character flaw. Wow, that came together. Uh, now we're on to step 12. Ooh. Now we are on to step 12. Do you need So it? this really, like, I, I would suggest using a ruler, straight edge tape, something to help you if you don't have a super steady hand. Okay. Even a stencil is okay. There are some pretty good uh, sparkle stencils. So if you have a very, very shaky hand, like you've got uh, any, any of the uh, illnesses that cause your hand to be really, really unsteady, even as you support it, just stencil. Mm. It's totally okay. Shirley's like, ooh, don't shortcut your twinkle. That needs to be a shirt. Don't shortcut your twinkle. <laughs> don't shortcut your twinkle. You deserve all your twinkle. All the twinkle. You deserve it. 
Oh, sparkle in the world. Just for you. Mm -hmm. <sighs> All right. I'm ready to do. Did you put up 12? I did. Okay, so let's do 12. Right. 12 is adding the white highlights uh, here and there that create tons of drama. All right, you have to. Now, here's my little feeling on these little white reflection high highlights. I do something called breaking the line, which is mm -hmm. that I don't necessarily do a solid line. Some of the line is very light. Yeah, it really It's a is. hint. It's a hint, my friends. Like a ghost pepper. It's a hint. Ghost peppers don't hint. They obliterate you. Oh, okay. Then not like a ghost pepper. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I think, I think, I think that's you. You, you missed that one there. I was <laughs> Why was everyone eating them on a challenge? Because it's if you can survive. Oh man, I you know Brave Wilderness is one of my very very favorite YouTube channels on the planet. I think they're amazing. <laughs> Um, I have to say the whole thing where he got stung by everything made me really glad that I was in an art vertical and that pain was not a requirement. <laughs> he was sometimes a little fatigue, a little mental fatigue, but not like, not like, I'm going to take this animal, which is in the pain index of blah, and I'm going to let it sting me and see what happens. You know what? I'm like, you know, I could help you shortcut that. It hurts. That's what happens. It hurts. So. Actually, he's just making sure kids know how to, uh, we're going to put a little bit of a, a bit at the ear, right? These lines should be a little bit rough, kind of implying, oh, maybe, maybe like a little hair, a little fur, a little something. These can be the like light reflections up here on the main. I'm going to add a little bit like on the brow bone here. A little bit going, whoa, so shiny. You know, Francine, I don't know what what brought that up, but I agree poutine is the best, and it is the thing that I missed only after, second only after Timbits. I just miss Canadian. They're so lovely. So lovely. It not is. if you cut in line and not after a hockey game, but other than that, completely lovely. I like Canada land. Canada it's a land nice place. A fun land. It's a nice place to live. It is the place where Scott Pilgrim comes from, for it sure. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to continue on. We've added a highlight under the eye. We've added a little bit in the corner and up at the top of the eyelid. Mm -hmm. Let's put a little bit of his little cheekbone. Let's make his cheekbone pop. Pop, pop, pop. And then you should have a little bit of his jaw. Oh, yeah. Your jaw is so awesome. Come down a bit there, and then we can kind of come down his little face. Do 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 do, do do do, do 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 do, do 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 do. All right, so we're gonna come under here. Get down in that little nose. <laughs> Let's have a little line around your mouth. It's very soft mouth. Very soft mouth. Shiny belly. Micheline was, I think that's how you say her name, Micheline. Mm -hmm. She's saying home of the ketchup chips. But I was thinking that's actually maybe not a bad name for a horse. Ketchup chips? Ketchup. <laughs> and there's the Pulp Fiction joke, but I'm done. Okay, so. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino, if you paint with us, hi. Okay, so. Um, Send me your picture, dude. I want to see it. What? Quentin's painting. Oh, yeah, Can okay, that's also okay, but you don't have to. I would love to see anybody's painting. You're welcome to. We have groups. Mm -hmm. You can share with us online. Uh, we're on the Instagram and Twitter. I'm a fan but you know what I don't work. do on Twitter? Anything upsetting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't actually. Nope. It's all yeah. just happy reposting because who needs that? Nobody needs to be extra upset. 
I don't want to help wow. with being extra upset. This is really just come in. Yeah, they do. They just come in, don't they? A little bit of a... If you like them, if you don't like them, don't do them. And then, because it's the end, <gasps> and when we get to the end, we put our name on it. And it says we could name the horse Tarantino. <gasps> That's his name. Tarantino the horse. That's a good horse name, actually. It's I get a horse. It's going to be Tarantino. That's a, that's a, that's a winning name. That is. Not a, you can dress him up fancy then. In a fancy, Actually, fancy a horse tack. named Tarantino can do whatever he wants. That's true. But he would talk to you a lot before he did probably it. Probably would tell you. Yeah, he probably would just talk your ear off. Otherwise. You thought you, Mr. And, Ed was chatty? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. You should, you should meet. Mr. Tarantino, the horse, he talks all so, the time. So people here are like, obvious moment, the two chattiest art teachers on YouTube <laughs> like Tarantino. What a huge surprise. And also, okay, here's how the art sharp is like Tarantino. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll you ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? Uh -huh. Okay. This is how the art sharp is like Tarantino. Uh, no. There's a lot of talking and nothing happens for a very, 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 very long time. And then all of a sudden, at the end, it's all action, 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 and you have a painting. This is true. It's super true. I'm <laughs> just like Quentin Tarantino. Just like. <laughs> Same. We're twinsies. 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 <sighs> Same. Same, same. Well. Same. Now that you've done this. Same. You now should, that I've done this. Now that you've done this, you should watch the history of the world. Mm-hmm. And you should download the free mini download book. The free book. Because like at the end, right? At the end, it says, it says like, so you do all the stuff, show, right? Show. They and can't it, see. You just see you looking down at something. Okay, I'm trying to get to a thing. So okay. here's technique references. These are all the techniques that you learned in this painting written Ooh. out. Look how many there are. There's many. And look at the end. It gives you suggestions of what to <gasps> do with the look painting. At look at that. There's that painting. Look right? at that. And it look says... It says, hey, what to do with your finished piece? It says, hang it on your wall or give it as a gift, just like Santa. And that tells you all about how to hang it on your wall or ship it as a gift, some stuff you might need to know. Ooh. So it tells you some basic stuff that as a beginner, you might not know about hanging art, weird stuff. But you guys can know basic stuff like nail on the wall, hang on wall. You guys get that. But there's weird stuff with the art you might not know, and I included that. And there's some stuff about shipping you know and, what? and stuff. And so, yay! You know what they need to do? And we're going to make it pretty, pretty, pretty. Subscribe. Oh, yeah. If you think this was cool and you like free art books and you want to, uh, the next one with the mini book is the blue one on this weekend. The the birds is just come learn how to paint icicles and hang out with us. And we're just very chatty, groovy at the table. Mm -hmm. Come Saturday is another step by step. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm fine. All right. Just Tarantino. We're all done here. We're all done. I want a yellow bee suit. Be good to yourself. I'm not Uma Thurman. Be good to each other. I'm Quint I'm Tarantino. I'm not Uma Thurman. And I want to see you. I'll be so really soon. Bye bye. Bye bye.